briefcase, briefs, and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In the 1886 Supreme Court of the United States case of Ex Parte Royale, the question of the circuit court's authority to intervene in state proceedings was examined in provocative detail. The case examined if the circuit court could order the release of someone held in violation of the Constitution, outlining certain special circumstances under which the federal government could step in to release an individual held by state authorities. The key issue raised by this case was whether the circuit court had jurisdiction to discharge individuals on the grounds of unconstitutional restraint by state courts. This concern was prompted by an act passed on March 3, 1885, which empowered the Supreme Court to review final verdicts of circuit courts in specified instances. The legal battleground in question, whether writs of habeas corpus, orders requiring a person under arrest to be brought before a judge, could be issued if the detainee's constitutional rights were found to be violated under a treaty or U.S. law. In his momentous deliberation, Justice Halen sought to determine the exact jurisdiction of circuit courts. He questioned if individuals held under a state process for trial on state offenses could be released if their liberty was restrained against the national constitution. Central to this investigation were the specific sections of the revised statutes, shedding light on the powers of the Supreme Court, Circuit, and District Courts, when it came to issuing writs of habeas corpus and probing into the causes of liberty restraint. The circuit court was discovered to have broad discretion when it came to handing down writs of habeas corpus, with a strong emphasis on the public good. It was determined that the accused couldn't be discharged before their state court trial unless the national constitution was found to have been violated. More so, even after the state court had decided, the circuit court retained the power to reassess the case. In instances where the detainee's liberty was infringed upon by a federal law, they could be granted release by the circuit court. Every judgment, naturally, had to be vetted and affirmed, but this didn't impede the petitioner's right to reapply for a future court hearing if circumstances deemed it necessary. The case underscored the delicate balance of power between state and federal jurisdictions, reinforcing the intricate legal machinery that maintains the sanctity of individual liberties in the United States. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law. Elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.